there is still a lot of stigma and misunderstanding around the diagnosis of functional neurological disorder. So hi, I'm Dr. Julia. I'm a licensed pediatric psychologist that treats FND in kids and teenagers. If you're not a kid or teenager, this might be less relevant, but you're welcome to follow along because a lot of the research is similar. My goal in sharing this is to provide more education on this diagnosis so that there's less stigma around it. So based on current literature, and this is a kind of like an overview article, we currently think that there are three kind of main overarching components of FND. So one is going to be sensory motor processing. And what that means is that there's a couple different things that means, okay, so one is that maybe the person who has FND makes overly precise predictions, and at the same time, the body and brain don't communicate as well. So then there's feedback coming in from your body that then your brain doesn't really integrate. So that's where that loss of agency might happen. It's because you expect one thing to happen, but then your body does something different or interprets certain sensations differently. So there is that mismatch. The next one is emotion processing. So there is some research that suggests that there is hyperactivity in the stress response, whether that's positive stress or negative stress. And there might be a heightened emotion slash motor or dash motor linkage. And then we have some different top-down processing approaches. So there's a couple of different things that contribute to this. So currently they find altered action selection. Um, we also find kind of excessive self-monitoring. I'm just looking at my article right here to make sure I don't forget anything. Elevated movement focused attention and then distorted action inference and diminished sense of agency. That's a mouthful. Basically what it means is that your brain and your body are miscommunicating in a way that goes both directions and that you might be attending more to any movements and to any physical sensations in the body. Here's just another table slash graph from a different article that shows kind of all the different, gosh, I don't even know how to get out of the way, um, all the different components of FND and how it might kind of come to develop in a person. So it actually is quite common, if you're thinking about this, it is quite common in kids and teens with some other neurological conditions such as uh, tics or epilepsy because they're body is used to experiencing certain symptoms based on certain physical sensations like increased heart rate for example they're like oh gosh that means i'm having an episode or i'm having a seizure and then even if they're not their body interprets it as if they are so that is kind of how i conceptualize fnd i hope it was helpful